Thank you so much. Um, well, it was really, in talk about inspiration, those two, both of those two talks were so inspiring, and I feel like I've been on the outside for a long time. I, I, I got in, interested in organic food probably more than 30 years ago, and people thought I was crazy when I was a vegetarian 30 years ago, and now it seems like everybody around me has, has really um, come, come more around to my lifestyle, and it's been, it's been, um, anyway, it's been a long journey. Um, so um, I was going to talk to you all today about moving markets and how, what we're doing at Friends of the Earth uh, and what I've been doing to um, promote um, healthy and sustainable food in, in the marketplace. And, you know, we, um, at, we've been, we work on market-based campaigns because that's really where we can make, make the biggest change. Um, at the t at the moment, um, we've we've thought for many years we've been kind of blocked at at the policy level, and so we've been focused on. Oh, am I gonna? Okay. Okay. Um, no. So. Um, yeah. Well, no, that's okay. Sorry, you guys. Um, so, in terms of, I'm going to talk primarily about the work that we've been doing on antibiotics and getting antibiotics out of the food supply. Um, how many of you are have heard about antibiotic resistance and the problem of antibiotic resistance? So, you understand what that is, right? Um, you've known somebody who's gotten sick and who hasn't been able to be treated with with their, the first pharmaceutical and the second antibiotic and maybe the third antibiotic. Well. Um, you may not know that 70 to 80 percent of all the antibiotics used in, um, sold in the country are used in animal agriculture to keep animals alive in the filthy, um, unsanitary, cramped, crowded, cruel conditions that they raise animals in in the country. So um, we really, well, uh, so our, our goal has been to try to change the market so that we can get antibiotics out of the food supply, particularly out of meat production. And for 30, 40 years, we've been trying to get change at the policy level. That hasn't worked, so we've, we, we went to the market. So I want to tell a story about how I actually personally got into this, which is, um, well, how these campaigns kind of came about, which was two and a half years ago, I was at a conference called the Menus of Change Conference, which is an incredible uh, conference organized by the Culinary Institute of America and Harvard School of Public Health, bringing culinary professionals together to talk about and, and inform and inspire each other around how to promote healthy and sustainable food. And they have these menus of change principles that are all about healthy food, plant-based diets, getting antibiotics out of the food. And they had a panel, um, and the, uh, the culinary vice president for McDonald's was on that panel. And he was up there talking about how McDonald's was going to embrace these menus of change principles. And I was in the audience, and I was like, oh my god, that is incredible. McDonald's is the largest food corporation, largest restaurant corporation in the world. And he was up there saying that he was going to embrace these principles. And so I immediately ran up to the podium. I knew they were going to ask questions. And um, it was like my opportunity to say, to put him on the spot and say, so does that mean that McDonald's is going to stop using, you know, serving meat raised with routine antibiotics? And, and then I said, and does that mean that McDonald's is going to serve a plant-based um, veggie burger? Um, because you just said it in front of 400 people on camera. He said that, that he embraced the principles. And he looked at me and he's like, well, and he looked very like, uh, you know. <laughs> and, I w and he said, well, you know, we really need to consider this issue of antibiotics. It's very important, blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, and on the veggie burger, you know, we tried that a long time ago. I don't know if we're going to be doing that anytime soon. And I was like, well, that's too bad, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so... Then, um, right after he finished his, he came down off the, off the stage, I went up and started talking to him, and, and his um, VP for external affairs was with him, and I said, you know, we really should talk about this antibiotics stuff, because it's really important. We'd really like to start a dialogue with you, and, um, and so that's what we did. Um, we or organized a, a group of NGOs to meet with, to start engaging with McDonald's on this issue regularly, and... Um, and we were able to kind of get them to move really quickly on the issue of getting routine antibiotics out of chicken, um, which is something that we, they announced last, last year and it was a huge, huge victory, or just a few, not last year, a few months ago. And um, so anyway, that was, 
that was kind of the beginning. When I, was, when I heard him say that, though, I was sitting in the audience, and I also thought to myself, we need a way to hold these companies accountable for what they say. Th these companies are always saying that they're doing great things, so we needed to hold them accountable. So I had this idea that we should be doing a scorecard for restaurants, and we should rate them on, um, on things like antibiotics. Initially, I wanted to do a scorecard rating them on labor, on organic, on antibiotics, on, um, on health, on, all, and on veggie options, all these things. And I went back home, and I started thinking about it, and I, I, I took this idea to some of my colleagues, and we decided that we would focus, um, they kind of convinced me that focusing on like all these issues is too much. <laughs> I always want to do too much. Um, and, um, and that we should just focus on the issue of antibiotics and, and still ask the companies about things like hormones, organic, grass-fed, et cetera. And so we came up with this idea to do this chain reaction scorecard report, I mean, uh, uh, like a survey, to, to rate the top restaurants on, on, their, on their policies around antibiotics. So that's what we did. And then as we started doing this, um, so this is what it looks like, and we've done two so far. This is the first one. Um, and so, um, let's see. So, as we were uh, as we were doing the scorecard, we also decided that we were going to start doing some public campaigning around antibiotics. And we we picked a bunch of different targets. Subway was one of them. These are some of the organizations we were working with. And we uh, we managed to get over 300,000 people to sign petitions, um, which we delivered to Subway, and we were able to get a victory uh, with Subway, um, which made, a com made made an announcement, um, yeah, that they were going to remove all the all routine use of antibiotics out of all of their meat. Um, but there's a little catch here. That was by 2025, so some time some time there. Um, but since, since then, we've also been campaigning on some other companies, and just because they know that the scorecard is coming out, they feel the pressure. And so just in two years, the first year we had four, five companies, four companies that were, um, that, that scored, that got, got a passing grade, not all A's, but they got a passing grade. Um, in the second year, nine companies had a passing grade, and um, several companies like Wendy's, Taco Bell um, adopted new policies um, on, on mostly on chicken. Um, we also did a campaign on In-N-Out Burger, and um, it was one of the fastest campaigns we've ever done. We, we literally like sent them a letter, then sent them another letter with 50 organizations on it, then got Reuters to call them to say, what are you doing on this issue? And then the next day, they announced that they were going to take antibiotics out of their beef, beef, beef supply, um, which was great, right? Great. Um, but um, we really need everybody's help in this room to hold them accountable to that promise because it's, it's almost, it's about eight months later, and every month we send them a letter and we say, so where are you, got, where are you at with this, this promise? And every, every month they, they write us back and say, we're working on it, you know, we're having conversations, and, but there's no like, commitment of, by this date we are going to do this and here's how we're going to do it. And the truth is that In-N-Out Burger, I don't know if there's any In-N-Out Burger fans here, um, In-N-Out Burger really, it's the better burger, supposedly. Well, they do get their, a lot of their meat supply from Harris Ranch, which is this massive, massive factory farm, 100,000 cattle head um, in Central, Central Valley. Horrific place, I think. Um, every, you smell it when you go by. Um, that's where they're getting some of their beef. So it's going to be a long, long road to get uh, In-N-Out Burger to um, get the meat, get, get the, to get antibiotics out of their beef. We're also doing a campaign um, with In-N-Out Burger to ask them to serve an organic, uh, grass-fed, humane burger, which we, we think we can, we can win, but we need everybody's help to keep putting pressure on them. So we do this through petitions, through um, on-the-ground actions, through uh, emails, um, and then also co media coverage is key. Media coverage is so important. Whatever you're doing in your life, if you're trying to make change, try to figure out what the media angle is because that's what really gets companies. When you get their names, when, when they see their names um, in, in a bad light um, in the, on the front pages, they don't like that. Um, and so we ha these are the companies that still have an F. Um, we're going to be working on those, um, but at Friends of the Earth, we're really trying to move kind of beyond just antibiotics and, and asking them to, to offer uh, organic, grass-fed, pasture-based products. We think it's not enough to just get antibiotics out of the meat. We really need to change our whole meat supply chain, our system. Um, so another campaign that we've been working on is uh, targeting Darden, Olive Garden, which is one of the largest restaurant companies in the world. They have seven, many restaurants. Olive Garden is one. Um, 
Seasons 52, Capitol Grill, Bahama Breeze, Longhorn Steakhouse. And so we put together a coalition of groups and over 12, 13 groups all came together to do this petition, um, petition delivery um, on the ground asking uh, the company to adopt a good food policy, good food purchasing policy, which is really looking at labor issues, animal welfare, local, local economies, health and environment, um, including um, antibiotics, of course, and less meat. Um, I was thinking when um, Debbie was talking about the 0, 50, 100, that we should have 50% 50, 50 reduction in, on, or 50% sustainable tra transit. 50, we should also have 50% reduction in meat consumption. That would be a really, a you could add that to the kind of talking points around 50, because I think if we really need that. Um, yesterday I was talking about how we can't meet our 2% our two, two degrees Celsius targets unless we dramatically reduce meat consumption. So that's one of our asks. Um, we also are talking about living wages. And um, just recently, we uh, gave the CEO of Darden the Golden Greenwashing Award <laughs> um, because he, for serving inhumane factory farm meat and dairy, because um, he was getting a really a prestigious award from the nation's restaurant news. So we tried to make him kind of look bad um, on social media. And, um, and this is, you know, Olive Garden's response has just been very much, um, you know, we're committed to serving responsibly sourced food, supporting employees and the environment, and we come back and say good food isn't produced with routine antibiotics, serve good food now. So, you know, we're still, we're in a big fight with them. If any of you are, ever eat at Olive Garden or any of those restaurants, um, you know, definitely um, think about it. I mean, I don't know, do any of you eat there? Probably not, no. So you're, you're all so smart. But, um, but we need to keep putting the pressure on that company. Um, we got some nice, you know, we've gotten some nice press out of it, um, but the company is a really hard one to move, and it's gonna take probably many years of pressure to do this. Um, and, and the reason, I didn't say at the beginning, the reason that we focus so much on restaurants is that 50% of all the food of, of all the food we eat is outside of the home. So if we wanna make the systemic change, if we wanna change practices on the ground, individual behavior is really important, but we need to change the restaurants, the places where people are eating food. So um, that's what one reason we focus on the market. The other reason is that we wanna build the power and we wanna put pressure on the policymakers. We really wanna work on the policies. We have to change the policies at the national federal level. Unfortunately, um, even under Obama, it was really hard to do that in some ways around industrial agriculture and, and more support for organic. There was some more support for organic and local food systems, but um, very difficult. And now, of course, under Trump, it's gonna be so much more difficult um, to, um, to make the change at the policy level, right? It's just gonna be really hard. And so now more than ever, we need to keep that momentum moving forward in the marketplace where we know people want food without hormones, without antibiotics, without pesticides. Um, they want to feed without GMOs. They wanna feed their kids healthy food. So we need to keep working to change all of these restaurants to make them uh, more more sus sustainable, and we are also working with investors to do that. Um, that's another big strategy is to get investors. Um, that's what restaurants and companies, of course, listen to their investors. Um, so we've had a lot of shareholder resolutions that we have been have been introduced um, at shareholder meetings, et cetera. So um, just to wrap up really quick, um, just what I was saying before about how important it is to change all of the the food wherever you are. So you can do this wherever you work, wherever you live, wherever you, whatever institutions you interact with, whatever restaurants you interact with, every day you can make a difference both with how you choose to spend your, you know, your money, um, what you choose to eat, but also taking the next step. And what you were saying about like feeling uncomfortable, I mean, people don't like to go out to dinner with me because I sit at the table and I'm always asking the, 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 the server, like, where do you know where the food comes from? You know, do you know if it was made with, you know, is there other pesticides? You know, where, where did, the, and people just are like, oh, do you have to ask that question? And, uh, you know, it's really, so then you just choose to go to restaurants where you know the answer is, it comes from the local farms. You know, we don't use chemicals, but for the most part, it's hard to find those restaurants. And so asking to speak to the manager, tell them that you want, you know, you want meat raised on the pasture, you don't want factory farm meat and dairy. Um, that makes a big difference. And you can do it everywhere, anywhere you are. You know? So that's some um, hope um, that this gives you some, some um, ideas about what you might do to help create a more sustainable, healthy, healthy food system.